Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. The next 10 minutes are inspired by a promise and a buffet. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the engine. A lot of my students listen to the podcast, which I appreciate. I think it's awesome, and especially since my students were really the motivation for the podcast. They're, we get into a lot of different things in class, and we always have a great time with it, but sometimes students would say, hey, my friend in your Thursday class said that you went off about something, and you didn't say that stuff in the Sunday class. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't have all this stuff planned out. I, like, We just end up talking about random things and we have a good time with them we dive down these rabbit holes and they said well why don't you record it so i could hear that stuff and i thought it was a really interesting idea so that was kind of the impetus for for the show but as people started listening to it more and more i've had a couple students come up and say hey i want to be on the podcast <laughs> which i think is so funny I don't know why it's funny, but it just cracks me up. It's like, why? What are you going to say? They don't know. They don't know what they are going to say, but they want to be part of it, which I appreciate. I love my students. They're fantastic. But I have tried a couple times to, to interview students. The first first interview I did was this guy, Kevin. And I love Kevin. He's the best. He's graduating. He's going off to college. And he is the most larger-than-life character you've ever met. But as soon as that mic went hot, man, he just clammed up. He clammed up. And, and again, it was an educational experience for me and for him. And we're going to redo the, we're going to redo the episode before he goes to college just because it wasn't, wasn't nearly as awesome as it could have been. But I learned after that, that's kind of like, Hey, you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot. Even if the kids ask you to be on, they don't know what they're asking. Because they've never had the experience. So this one girly mom, love you, mom. She's great. She says, look, I really want to be on the podcast. And she's into audio and video editing. She, she has some real interesting passions, which I'd love to talk to her about. But I said, look, I'll make you a promise. You do 10 five-minute recordings on your phone, like you're doing 10 podcasts on your phone, and you send them to me. I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do, but you gotta hit record and you gotta talk nonstop without saying um and mm and bleh for five to 10 minutes and you gotta do it 10 times. And then we'll talk about you being on the show. Now I've made this promise to a few people and lots of them have said they'll do it. Two of them have tried. Iman has the most episodes in, clocking in at two episodes in. So she's got eight more to go. And I'm not giving her any feedback, by the way. The whole task is to speak into the void, to say things and be vulnerable to judgment and criticism, to not know if people are responding, to not know if anyone's listening, but to keep talking about what's important to you and having that, that steadfast mentality of, hey, I'm getting through this idea, whether anyone likes it, or is listening or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm getting through. So that's what Iman's been doing. In her most recent episode, she was just kind of recounting her day because, again, she doesn't have a lot of great idea right now, ideas right now about what to talk about. She, but she was saying how when the lockdown started, she had all of these aspirations for her days. She just fit her days jam-packed, got all this material done. And it could be school material, could be SAT material, could be personal tasks and things like that. And now it's like, she says she's just tired all the time. She doesn't want to get anything done. She's not motivated to get things done. She just says it's terrible. She doesn't understand why. And, and I can relate. I mean, people, this is something that people go through. But the thing that it really made me think of, and the thing that I, I can express to her is it's kind of like going to a buffet. Okay, now, I, my wife and I did not vacation very much at all. When we were about 27, 28, 
we were working like dogs. This is before we had kids. We were working seven days a week, both tutoring. And we decided to go on our first vacation. Now, again, we were self-employed from the day we graduated college. So we really were working a ton and we were surviving. We were making it through the 2008, 2009 financial crisis. Um, it was not, it was not a pretty sight, but we did, we made it. And so we go to the Ryu Palace in Cabo, Mexico. It was amazing. So we pull up to the Ryu, you know, we get this all, in, it's an all-inclusive package. So we get the airfare and the hotel and all the food and everything. And the buffet at night was phenomenal. So you roll into that buffet and you had, they had this giant, giant thing of paella that they were making this giant it had to be the pan had to be like five feet across right as you walk in it's this great spectacle they had every kind of seafood you could imagine because Cabo is the mecca for for ocean life I mean that's it man we were watching people on the beach pull puffer fish and puffer fish out and then go make these fancy you know very delicate fish fish dishes but in the buffet they had everything Got everything. And the first night I walked in there, my eyes just got as big as the paella pan. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yes. I mean, 27, 28, I could put down some food. So I went ham. I got crazy on the buffet. I mean, I must have gone back for three or four plates. And I was putting shrimp on there. I was putting different slices of beef on there and then chicken. And uh, I mean, pretty much everything you could imagine. Paella was great too. It was great. And I left stuffed. I don't even think I had room for any of the flan. It was amazing. And then around night three, I think we went for four or five nights. We really tried to do it up because we, we had just never been on vacation and we got this package. I mean, again, during the financial crisis, you could get vacation packages pretty cheap through Costco. But around night three, it was like, I, I'd walk in and there was nothing to eat. <laughs> as absurd as that sounds, literally it was, there's nothing to eat. Now, mind you, I'm surrounded by, it had to be an acre of food. It had to be every type of food you could possibly want. And I just didn't want any of it. And it was such a weird thing. It was like, what? What's going on? And I, I remember on day four, sitting by the pool, drinking my, you know, Miami Vice or whatever I was drinking, this little fruity, fruity rum drink. I'm thinking about it, like, what is wrong with me? There's nothing to eat. That's the most absurd thing I've ever said. But I realized what it was. It's that when there was so much to eat and I wanted to eat it all, I never really got an opportunity to appreciate or enjoy any one thing. It was almost like the quantity of it was a tremendous burden. And so having all of the different options just kind of ruined the experience for me. Having everything just ruined it. Having the seafood, having the beef, having the chicken, having the paella, all of it. And if I had just walked into that place and there was one main dish that they were doing perfectly, like it was just the paella, it was just shrimp, or it was just the slice of beef or this chicken dish, I would have loved it. That's what they did in college. And I remember eating at the I House in, at Berkeley in this international house. They had this really good, uh, really good cafeteria. And they would have one main like protein dish and I'd be a duck or chicken or beef or whatever. And I would love it. I remember getting these big plates of duck. Man, I, it was fantastic. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. But it's because they only had the duck. If they had duck and they had beef and they had chicken and they had all these things, I wouldn't have appreciated the duck the same way. And that's what's going on with Iman. She has an infinite buffet of options in life. But what she needs to do is do what I did 
on night four at the Ryu Palace, instead of walking in and considering all of the different options at the buffet, I walked in with a pre-designed menu in my head. I was like, tonight I'm eating fajitas and I'm going to have the best fajitas I could possibly have. And I did. I did. I had beef and chicken fajitas and they had, of course, every fixing and topping you could hope for for fajitas. I didn't even look at the, at the kind of, uh, at the specialty item they had. I didn't look at the paella or whatever was in that big pan in front. I just went straight for fajitas and the fajitas were phenomenal. And that's what Iman has to do. She has to find something that she decides beforehand she's going to commit herself to doing. And she has to do that one thing really well. And that could be relaxing. It could be working on homework. It could be reading a book. It could be exercising. But she needs to focus in on one thing and do that thing really well. Neglect the glaring fact that she has so many different options for the day. Neglect the fact that she could stop at any point and switch gears. No. She needs to stay focused. Because it will not only make her happier with her day. It will give her a sense of a goal. It will give her a sense of structure. And ultimately, she'll have a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment far greater than if she just sat around contemplating her options. So if you find yourself presented with a day of infinite possibility, if you find yourself at a buffet with everything you could possibly want, focus in on one thing. Focus in on one task, one goal. Forget the fact that all the other options exist and just do that one thing as well as you can. And I'm willing to bet you'll be far happier at the end of the day than if you had looked at everything else. I'm Matt Todd, and this is the engine that drives me. Go out and crush it.